has decided to honor Pam Wexlax. And I would like to... I'd like to ask uh, both Mike Manning, who is chair of the Appropriations Committee, and Gene Birchman, who is chair of the School Committee, to say a few words. I would like to say how pleased I am that Pam Waxlax has been recognized by receiving this year's Moderator's Award. Uh, Pam, unfortunately, Pam is stepping down this year because she's moving to Colorado, so the timeliness is really important, and uh, so, again, we're just very happy that she did get this award. Um, the attention to detail that she brings is tremendous and you need look no further than the very long and comprehensive Appropriations Committee report that's in your hands to see testimony and evidence to her work and her work ethic. So we owe her a great debt of service for the thousands of hours that she's committed to the town. But more importantly, she, the way in which she conducts herself and conducts business is a role model to all of us. On day one of the annual town meeting, the articles featured the fiscal year 2019 budget, the Main Street Corridor project, and the Turf Field project. Article 8 by the town manager, the town budget, featured some discussion about the school budget after concerns about potential cuts to programs. I was wondering what other reductions uh, the school systems looked at, if there were reductions that were eventually nixed or other things that they discussed. That they discussed. So um, one thing that comes to mind are services that affect what we call specials rotation. So outside of the actual academic classroom program and the teacher delivering that program, we have a number of really valuable services that are offered to students. And we had to really look hard at what, for example, one that comes to mind, um, as Mr. Mr. Ghosh just came up to, to help me out here, was um, around technology. And this was a service that we really needed five, six years ago because it was all so new to us um, that our teachers are feeling so much more comfortable with now um, that although it would be, again, as soon as you get rid of somebody, the other people have to pick up what they do, because it didn't have the impact or we, didn't, we evaluated that it didn't have the impact at the classroom level, um, I'm going to turn it over to you to go through those. Um, th that was something that we were able to do comfortably. The 2019 budget was passed and is set at $88,886,985. Article 20 by the DPW discussed the Main Street Corridor project. Discussion consisted of concerns about parking and undergrounding utilities. Uh, handed out the undergrounding would stop at the fire station and police station, but the depiction seemed to show no poles to the west of that as well. Um, could you just clarify, are there going to be poles to the west of the police station? The scope of the undergrounding is in front of the police station up to Hayden Road. If you want uh, $14 million of improvements to the downtown for $3 million, then you vote yes for this. Uh, er since I moved here 15 years ago, Virtually every business along Main Street has improved itself, from Bill's Pizza to Hopkins Drug to every other building along the way has made improvements. The town now, at this point in our growth, is overdue to make this investment in our growing community and to keep the downtown the center of our community life. So I vote in favor of this. The article passed. Article 22 by the school committee regarded the turf field project at the middle school high school fields if the if the article passes construction will begin at the end of the sports season and is anticipated to be finished in early fall so if you can move to the next slide so the project cost uh, we went out to bid and we do have the project cost it's 3.5 million dollars Again, thanks to grant funding from CPC, we will be assuming that that is voted tonight as well. We'll be able to reduce that cost almost by half, by $1.7 million, making the, the cost of the borrowing $1.8 million. Selectman Todd Sestari was against the article due to financial concerns. The last slide shows the actual percentages of reimbursement from the state. We can see that it went from 100% back in 2002-2003, and this year's projection is 
So right now, with the requested CPC borrowings, we're actually going to be borrowing more than we would be collecting in the coming year, and I don't think that's good practice. Question Thank for you. the Board of Selectmen. Um, I think you said initially that they were not, they didn't need to weigh in on this. No, they, they can weigh in as in but individuals, they, but there's no okay, requirement so, that they so vote So I guess I want to confirm that Todd Sestari was weighing in as an individual, because I don't think there's an individual in this room that could come prepared with a slideshow integrated into the projector and ready to roll. So it, it, didn't, it didn't look like an individual speaking. A few student athletes and coaches were in attendance to express the need for the turf fields. I, I'm very for this. Um, I know countless friends of mine who played for our school, even who played for other schools. I'm currently playing club soccer at Northeastern, and I have a couple of friends on the team who played in the TVL and remember our grass soccer field because it was so bad. And I feel like that's a point of pride for our school and for our community where we should have fields that we feel comfortable inviting other teams, inviting the community to play on. Um, I just, it speaks to how we are as a community and that's why I'm very for this, uh, this motion to turf the fields as soon as possible. The article passed a standing vote 288 to 61. On day two of the annual town meeting, Article 26 by the Community Preservation Committee raised some discussion about a proposed $150,000 for a dog park at Hayden Row. There are concerns about dog parks, as I'm sure most people know. Um, it excludes a lot of, fam uh, of uh, community members, for instance, people who are afraid of dogs or that, who don't like them. Therefore, people of all ages, particularly the elderly and young children, will not be comfortable there. Some community dog pots have found that they cannot allow children at all. Medway's community dog park does not allow children. Franklin's community dog park, children must be 16 years of age or accompanied by an adult. The dog park funding ultimately failed 64 to 184, but the other five items in the article passed. Article 27 by the Community Preservation Committee also raised some discussion regarding item C, which appropriated $600,000 for lighting at the Fruit Street Fields. Selectman Todd Sestari spoke out against the item. Um, as I look at the balances in the buckets, I see that between passive and active recreation and the undesignated bucket, uh, combined we have over $700,000 available. I would suggest that this be something that comes out of those buckets or two buckets uh, that are eligible for this project as opposed to using the credit card again. Youth soccer organizer Amy Mick expressed the need for lighting at the fields. In October, we lose daylight at such a rapid pace, we have to hold practices 4.30 to 5.30. And it's just not feasible for our coaches to get back and do that. So we end up canceling practices for you know a third of the season. If we have these lights, we're really able to extend the day for our families in town, it also allows us to open up the opportunity to rent it out to outside users who get charged a premium rate, which allows us to collect more income to help replace the turf in the future. So I think this, the lights at Fruit Street are a very important pro um, project and I'm fully supportive of the motion. The Fruit Street lighting passed a standing vote and the other two items in the article regarding land purchases also passed. Article 31 was a planning board article to increase the area of the hotel overlay district land area. When you expand it like this, you are asking for bigger hotels and busier hotels. No one has been interested. And this is at least the third time we've come up here mucking around with the hotel bylaw, praying somebody is going to take hold and build something. The article ended up failing the two-third requirement. Article 34 by the Planning Board attempted to increase the maximum building height of the Hotel Overlay District near Parkwood Drive. I will also state that as Chair of the Design <clears throat> Review Board, we have seen plans come before us um, for buildings in that district and for a hotel potential. And the premise was that they wanted a increase in the height of that building because they couldn't make any money at 45 feet. Are you kidding me? This is about somebody who owns a piece of property 
and they want to get more money out of it so a hotel can come in. I'm opposed. Former planning board member Ken Wisemantle pointed out a typo in the article. I believe the planning board's made a mistake with this description. I do not think that there's any hotel overlay district that's east of Parkwood Drive. It should be west of Parkwood Drive, I believe. After much discussion, the article failed the two-third majority, 122 to 182 against. Article 35 by the Planning Board amended the conversion bylaw and attempted to make any single family dwelling to accommodate no more than two dwelling units. Um, so it's, I, I put this under, if it, ain't, if it ain't broke, why the hell are we fixing it? Uh, you're still going to have to go to the Board of Appeals to go to, for two units. So if you go to four and the board says no, and the neighbors all raise hell, we don't want four, then they could reduce it. Well, they, have, they could not change it at all. That's the whole idea of getting a special permit. By way of history, some people like, think- Mike, can I interrupt you for a second? Can we confirm that special permit is required for the conversion? That's correct. Okay. The article failed the required two-third majority, 191 to 127. Article 36 by the planning board, accessory family dwelling unit attempted to regulate rental of an additional unit on the property. You can put a house anywhere on any single family lot in this town under this bylaw. I am against this. Um, I, I think this is a prescription for a disaster for this town, particularly considering the values of housing in this town. There's a lot of money to be made by people. And if you vote this down, you will not restrict the number of housing units that become available to our in-laws, to our parents, to our kids who can't afford their own homes. Uh, I, I would, I'm begging you to vote this down. The article failed the two-thirds majority. Article 37 by the Planning Board attempted to prohibit all marijuana establishments in Hopkinton. It's been connected to mental illness, and it's been connected to the possibility that they will advance to other substances and potentially lead to addiction. The article was amended to allow medical research and testing facilities. The legalization of marijuana in states across the country, there's demand for analytical techniques to detect cannabinols. With this sweeping ban as worded, we would exclude high-tech companies that are developing methodology to detect cannabinol. So with the change that I propose, research and testing would, would be permitted, and that's, that's the purpose of this amendment. After many lined up to speak about the article, it passed 281 to 51, banning all marijuana establishments minus medical facilities in Hopkinton. On day three of the annual town meeting, Article 38, a planning board article to regulate business lighting, raised a discussion. Offensive lighting is kind of like pornography. It's hard to define, but you know it when you see it. As Fran DeYoung said, the planning board struggled with lighting in the past. And no good solution has ever been found that scientifically defines what offensive light is. And the whole problem with this, say, bylaw is that's incredibly difficult to kind of do. The article failed the two-thirds majority, 73 to 52 against. Article 41, the tobacco bylaw by the Board of Health, seek to change the age of 18 to 21 to purchase tobacco. It's a slippery slope where at 18 years old, they, we're now telling them that they can't make a decision to, to have a, a dip on their way to boot camp. And believe me, I, I'm for like, I, I'd like tobacco to be banned altogether. However, it isn't. And at the age of 18, where you're an adult, you're expected to act like an adult. Um, my concern is that we're taking another decision away from someone at 18 years old. Um, I think that if there's someone in the military and they want to smoke and they're 18, great. If they're in the military and that's allowed, that's great. But here in Hopkinton, they're not going to be sold tobacco products unless they're over the age of 21. Same thing for alcohol. After much discussion, the article passed 105 to 36.
View a full recap of all three days of this year's annual town meeting at our website, hcam.tv, and you can also watch all three nights of the annual town meeting at our YouTube page, youtube.com slash hcamtv.